this is Christy from birdmentor.com where I teach advanced skills to beginning birders and thanks for joining me today. Okay, it's true, I have a foot fetish, but not the kind of foot fetish you're probably thinking. You see, my kind of foot fetish makes snowy winter days really exciting. All right, that probably didn't change where your mind was going. <laughs> you see, it all rests in the soles of a bird's foot. Today, I'm gonna to share a few insights into the world of bird tracking so that the next time it snows, instead of staying all bundled up inside, my hope is that you'll wanna throw on your winter boots as fast as you can to get outside to see what that new exciting story is the birds have left you in the snow. Tracking is a gigantic topic. Entire books and schools have been based on this ancient art. And because of this, I'm only gonna share a few of the core concepts with you today. So imagine that you're out for a walk or a nice cross country ski and you come across a group of tracks that are about the size of my hand, what do you do next? Approaching tracking is really similar to how I've structured the seven questions to bird identification. So you start with the big picture and you go all the way down to the micro detail. So with this set of tracks, what you do is you'd wanna look around and see if you can tell where the trail might be going, where it was coming from. And then you also wanna ask yourself, um, what habitat you're in, because that's really going to help narrow your choices down. I'm, heard you, I've, I'm sure you guys have heard me talk about that in other videos, right? So just by um, identifying what habitat you're in and what birds are found in that habitat, then your choices get much, much smaller. And then the next thing you can do in this big picture kind of um, place is see if you can determine the age of the track. So is it older? Is it fresh? Um, sometimes you can tell by looking at if, um, you know, knowing the weather, this is a really good thing to do is start to pay attention to the weather. And this will help you because if there's a fresh layer of just a dusting of snow and you knew that maybe at seven o'clock this morning, there's uh, maybe for about 20 minutes, there was light dusting and those tracks were on top of that, then you know the age of those tracks. The next thing you wanna do is see if you can determine how many individuals were in that group of tracks. Because as you know, only certain species of birds are flocking species while others are more solitary. So with this particular group of tracks that you saw, there was about six individuals. The third element you wanna look at is the gait. Now you can ask yourself, just to keep it really simple here, is it walking or is it hopping? Now a bird that's walking is gonna look like it has just one track at a time. So it's one foot in front of the other, right? Whereas a hopping bird is gonna have two feet together. So they're gonna be in pairs and they're gonna be, you know, two feet hopping. <laughs> now with this group of six that we saw, those birds were actually, they were all walking. They had a walking gait. The next question you wanna look at is that of size. But this can be kind of tricky with bird tracking because different from mammal tracking, where when you look at a, a mammal's foot, that foot will tell you the size of the animal that you're looking at, generally speaking. But with birds, because they have an alternate source of locomotion, they don't, their feet can be used for other purposes. So you can't always rely on the size of the foot to determine the size of the bird. Now, the American coot is a great example of this. Look at the American coot's foot for a moment. It's gigantic, right? For that little bird, <laughs> those huge feet. <laughs> but certainly don't ignore this element altogether. Try to learn some of the different species um, track sizes by learning their length and their width, because that information, when you're painting the bigger picture, will really come in handy. All right, so the last element we're gonna look at is that of shape. Now, if I were to ask you right now what a bird track looks like, what its foot looks like, what would you think? Maybe something like this. Three in the front, one in the back. That's called an anzodactyl track. That's great. Sometimes the anzodactyl tracks, they actually look a little bit more like this, where they have still the three in the front, but that third one in the back or that fourth one in the back, that's called the hallux on both of these. And sometimes the hallux doesn't always register or it just registers as like a little nub. And in fact, the tracks that we saw, those six individuals, they had this kind of a track shape, okay? Now, another shape that's important to know is the zygodactyl track. And so that generically looks like this, where there's two in the front and two in the back. Does anyone know what families of birds have zygodactyl tracks? 
right? There's the woodpecker, the owl, the cuckoos, the osprey, and this one's for you, Kevin in Arizona, the roadrunner. Okay, now, just one little note, and I'm not gonna go much further on this, because I, like I said, I can really geek out on this. Um, the owl zygodactyl tracks, they tend to look a little bit more like a K, okay? So go online, check it out. There's a bunch of great resources out there that I wanna share with you. Now. So one of my favorite resources are books. Now, there's two that I wanna to recommend to you that are my absolute favorite. The first one is by Mark Elbrock, and that is called Bird Tracks and Sign. Mark's entire book is dedicated to bird tracking. Now, the second book is by Dave Moskowitz, and it's a tracking book in the Pacific Northwest. And at the very end of Dave's book, he focuses on bird tracks back there. So it's another awesome resource. Now, if you want a real experience, like a nine month immersion program, where one of the things that you'll learn is animal tracking, then check out the Anaki Outdoor School. It's a school based in Western Washington. And I think one of the best um, places where people can go to learn survival skills and things like um, animal and bird tracking. Also, another thing that you can do is look in your own neighborhood and most likely there is a tracker there. In fact, in my hometown, there's a man by the name of Andrew Dobis who has a school called Three Red Trees. And Andrew is an incredible tracker and it's just amazing that in my little hometown, there's someone out there. And I bet that nowadays you can find someone in your own hometown. So get out there and look. And that leads me to my last, um, the last resource is just yourself. And that's getting out outside and watching the birds yourself, watching them move um, on the ground, up in trees. But obviously if we're focusing on tracking, you wanna watch them move about on the ground. And the last thing I'm gonna say before I go is that in just a couple of days, my free class to bird song is gonna be starting. So if you're interested in learning how to learn bird song, come check it out. You just have a couple more days to sign up. I'll leave a link below for that as well as all the other resources that I mentioned. Oh yeah, and I wanna recap on the birds that we saw. So those tracks that I, was, I talked about, right? Those were, um, they were anzodactyl tracks, right? They were moving, um, in a, uh, a walking gait, there were six individuals and they were in a forested landscape. So, any guesses as to who they might be? Leave your, co or leave your guess in the comment section below because I'd love to know what you think. All right, you guys, this was so awesome. Like I said, I can geek out for hours about bird tracking. So thanks for putting up with me. Thanks for watching this. And um, I hope to see you next week. Thanks.